Hello, everybody. So, um, I was thinking of um, thinking of doing a video about Lon's um, pathetic, rambling, whimpering rant at the um, at Judge Woodcock during his last appearance in court. Um, now. I just thought it'd be. I've not done a video in a while. I thought, you know what? Because I do, I do, I do kind of still enjoy these every so often. But um, this is kind of interesting because this is Lorne laying it on in front of the court, pleading for mercy, um, and it's kind of like I think he had an idea of what he was going to say, but it just came out. And it's all from his brain. It's interesting because we can look into it. Even though we know pretty much, we've you know, Jesus Christ, think about all the videos that I've done um, and that we've done our analysing the chat log and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's still fascinating to me to look into the depths of someone's mind who's so delusional and so pathetic. Um I also have to, you know, because like I have, have said many times, I don't agree with the catfishing thing. And I have to question whether I believe that me laughing at him is appropriate. Of course, it isn't the highest thing a person can do. But I also believe that, well, it's not really a belief, but I feel that if there's going to be somebody I can laugh at, it's got to be Lorne. Now, obviously, interfering with his life on a day-to-day -day basis is another matter. But, you know, we did a conversation about that. That was, you know, that was uh, that was pretty cool. I think we'll probably do another one soon. Um, but I'm trying to justify myself here, aren't I? <laughs> um, so I, I thought that... I can't remember how, why it popped into my head, but I was thinking about what he said at court... Um, I'm going to look at in detail what the judge said to him, but first I wanted to do this. Now, obviously a bit of context um, for anybody. You know, this is when Lorne broke his, the terms of his, proba of his, you know, probation, and he went inside for mainly drinking offences. Now, this is rather special because I was there to witness him saying this. Now, um, <clears throat> what's kind of remarkable about it, me and Shin had a conversation, I can't remember, I mean it's nearly two years ago, I can't remember exactly, but we were discussing, or at least we toyed around with the idea that he may say, we didn't know whether he was going to say something in court, and Shin, you know, he's a legal expert, you know, he obviously can't predict these kind of things, but it was more than possibly, we were like, I, I, I Pretty sure I remember us going, God, I hope he says something. But I remember watching the whole thing unfold, and it was just a remarkable bit of entertainment. You know, for somebody who's followed him, followed his story, and then see it unplay in front of you was just, it was a it was a joy to behold. And, you know, I can't... Because it's like a real-life movie. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I almost have to question myself, and so you sad bastard, what, what are you doing? But ultimately, what's the difference between that and watching a movie? One could argue that you're not travelling for several thousand miles to watch a movie. But, you know, I got a good holiday out of it. It was a good trip. Have you noticed how I'm trying to justify it to you? Great, isn't it? Um, but to sort of... It got to the end of it, and we were. I was really enjoying watching it all unfold. And then we were like, I remember now, it's coming back to me a little bit. Because we, we, we also played, you know, sort of theorised that uh, Mother Gwen might say something. And of course she did. And if that wasn't enough, suddenly Lorne stood up and it's like, oh my God, where's this going to go? And it was incredible, you know, like, it was like a gift from above. Because it's like, it, that, it, I went all that way and it was more than possible that it got delayed, but it didn't. It went ahead. We got there more or less on time, maybe a few minutes late. I got, we got there before it started. You know, Lorne was already in the courtroom, but um, 
it was um, just for, to see him stand up and take a drink of water and sort of compose himself and then come out with this waffle is, was just incredible. It was like, thank you, God. You know what I mean? It was like, it couldn't have actually been any better because not only did he say the most ridiculous things, he cried during the whole thing and then said something which... I'm, I've thought about this. I think... I don't think I've ever laughed as much and found anything as funny. But anyway, without further ado, let's... Um... Now, this was after his mother said something. So, Lorne, thank you, Your Honour. I wish I would have spoken before my mum because it's hard. <laughs> um, which is really interesting because I think basically what he's saying is that what he's saying there is he recognises that getting his mum to do his dirty work for him wasn't a particularly good thing to do so immediately he's trying to say you know he's trying to he's trying to cover his tracks isn't it I wish I would have spoken before my mum because it's hard. Well, he didn't need to get her to speak. So he's making a wish. And yet, you know, he chose, he knew that she was going to say something before he did. So that's bullshit. It's just him trying to appease his own conscience and appear more caring. Because it would seem that even, even he's got the level of awareness to know that that, you know, he's asking too much of his mother there. But it didn't. You know, he's fighting for his freedom, I suppose. Then there's the word Jesus, which is interesting in these type of scenarios because what you're doing is you're kind of calling on a divine witness. You know, it's like Jesus, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's you know, a witness greater than yourself. It's, it's usually an indication of lies. <laughs> um, I want help from probation. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to expand on that? <laughs> So already, in the first two sentences, we've got him covering, his, you know, trying to basically, even though he's got his mother to speak, he's kind of going back on that and saying he wish she hadn't, she hadn't have spoken. He's trying to make it appear that he's curing when clearly he's not. So we've got lies. And then because it's hard, it's like, well, okay, it's hard. So he's trying to make the court feel sorry for him and the judge feel sorry for him. Oh, it's really hard. It's like, dude, do you know what I mean? It's like already, you know, we're only... Th and then there's, you know, there's the calling on the divine witness and then I want help from probation. So he's making demands, he's making a wish, um, he's calling on probation. So he's blaming... So already in the first three sentences, sentence two is just one word, but technically it's still a sentence because we've got full stop. And then, not that he wrote out, but you get what I'm saying. So we've got him, basically, um, groveling about the fact that he's put his mum on the spot and trying to, uh, trying to, you know, appease his guilt and make it look like he's curing when he's really not. So we've got lies, guilt, shame, um, playing the sympathy, sympathy card, calling on the divine witness, and then blaming probation and saying he wants help. So he's making demands as well. Already. <laughs> within that, you know what I mean? It's remarkable, isn't it? Um, I don't know how to handle the stuff that's online. So, technically, that is a true statement. I believe him. You know, because what were you going to do? You have to believe what someone's saying and then you can take it apart. You know what I mean? Then you can... If, the, if, if there's evidence there to uh, to say it's lies, then we call it lies. But initially, if someone speaks or someone writes, you believe them. And I believe him. I don't know how to handle the stuff that's online. He doesn't. He should fucking stay away from it. And the reason he doesn't know how to handle the stuff online is because he hasn't got the self-awareness and he hasn't got the intelligence. So basically, he's meddling around with these people, you know, the catfishes, whoever that happened to be at the time. Um... You know, they, they manipulate him. And he can't... It's a dangerous scenario for Law on that because, you know, the person that was instigating it all until recent events unfolded was never going to let him go. And for all I know, still may, still may be interacting with him. So he has somebody there 
that's that's willing to torture him continuously, that doesn't give a shit about whether what happens to him. And for his and someone who has more intelligence than him, who has his little tor- the little torture doll, you know, and Lorne can't handle that. And the reason he can't handle it is for a number of reasons. Like I said, he's, he, the main one is desperation. He can't, he can't let go because it's all he's got. He doesn't have any... I think back then, Tony was still alive, God bless him. So all he really had was his family, that you know, and only his mum really gives a shit, hence why only his mum and I think one of his aunts t- showed up. But that was just, you know, to take Gwen there. Um, so no one cares, and he's pushed all them away. It's not like he's, he's you know, he, he, he's being the victim like he says he is. I'm after going to two parts this video. I'll fucking run. Um, so, like I said, he he can. I know some people will say, "Well, he has a choice. He has a choice." Of course, on a certain level, he has a choice, but on another level, he doesn't. He can't... It's a little bit like people drinking, you know, which obviously we'll talk about with Lon. You know, people have a choice, but they kind of also don't. It takes a certain set of circumstances to people to break away. I had a... I would say I had a drink problem. Um, Yeah, definitely. I was getting a bit of a beer gut. I managed to, for a number of reasons, is that I had a professional job. I had other interests, um, and I wasn't a criminal, so, um, I had the ability to step away from it, and, and, and some people find it very, very tough, Lawns is a registered sex offender, that doesn't have any friends, that doesn't have any money, that doesn't really have much, so of course, if someone wants to talk to him on the phone all the time, and pretend that they're the friend, he's gonna take it, um, and then it's not easy because it's not something I'm used to. Hmm. Not sure what he means there. It's not easy because it's not something I'm used to. Hmm. You see, you know, it's hard. It's not easy. It's all of this is in playing the victim, isn't it? I want help from probation. I don't know how to handle the stuff that's online. It's not easy. Maybe I think he's maybe talking as well about the kind of abuse that he's getting, which obviously Judge Woodcock talks about. But that abuse that abuse doesn't exist if you don't go online. You know, people don't necessarily know who he is in the area. You know, we went into the bar and asked some people, and they didn't know. I mean, that was in Scoey and quite a bit away, you know. But um, um. And of course, when he says it's not something he's used to, it's all he's known since he's got... Well, it's all he's known since 2007. I almost want to say, I don't know what they want from me. That's interesting. I almost want to say... He almost wants to say, which means that, he, you know, it's like, well, if you take the almost away, I want to say, I don't know what they want from me. Hmm. I mean, he kind of, he probably doesn't because he doesn't get the figure of ridicule that he is. Because I, you know, think about it. You wouldn't bring out the long reality show, would you? If you, if you, if you didn't fully, if you fully understood how people saw you and how people viewed it, it's remarkable that you can't. The lack of self awareness that he has is fucking remarkable, which is what makes it so funny. Uh, I almost want to say I don't know what they want from me. I don't know how to deal with it there again. And I hate it when people think bad of me. And I try to do the right thing, but sometimes it winds up being the wrong thing. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I believe him. In, 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 in his own way, he does try to do the right thing from his perspective, not from ours, like, for instance, you know, we did the YouTube channel, and he's, like, you know, doing his songs, and he's saying, I just want to entertain people, and all that kind of stuff, in his head, 
he wants to do good. But Lorne doesn't know what good is. Now, it's it's quite subjective, actually, you know, relative, you know, what, what is good and bad. It's a judgment system that we create, you know. Um, but, you know, doing good isn't something that he knows how to do because he's completely selfish. Um, I don't know how to deal with it and I hate it when people think bad of me. We, we, we've kind of talked about this and we do think that's true, which is remarkable because, of course, he's, the guy is a registered sex offender. He tried to have sex with a 13-year-old girl and was sent down for five years because of it and he hates it when people think bad of him. This is why I find it remarkable that he isn't depressed. It's like, jeez, man. You know what I mean? And I try to do the right thing, but sometimes it winds up being the wrong thing. I mean, probably what he means by that is he ends up screwing things up. Do you know what I mean? Um, everything that, you know, nothing is working out for him. But sometimes it winds up being the wrong thing. With me not being online, I can't sell my paws. I wrote a book when I was in jail. So he's pleading. This is interesting because here he's saying, I don't know how to handle the stuff online. And then he's saying here he's not allowed online with not being online. Well, you kind of contradicted yourself there, dude. Which one is it? Of course, he does get online, but he's not supposed to. Um, with me not being online, I can't sell my... I wrote a book when I was in jail and before I pause... I've got 50% of it that's going to the Wounded Warrior Project. So, of course, he's trying to make it out that he's some kind of hero. Please let me online and then charities can benefit. Look what I'm doing. And it's probably what he's hinting at when he says, I try and I try to do the right thing. But sometimes it winds up being the wrong thing. Well, you know, this Wounded Warrior thing. And this is where a lot of people who do what they think, people try and do the, you know, good things, but it isn't, a, a good thing is when nobody, it's because you know it's the right thing, when you can feel it, if you quiet your mind and you live in an integral way, you will know when someone is, when something is right and wrong, you just will, and that, Lawn donating the 50%. He's not doing it because he really feels for that cause. He's doing it because he thinks it makes him look good. And it's like, have you noticed, like on Facebook, people have got to tell people that they've donated. Look at what I've done. You know, people can't, them are the ones that are the dickheads, basically, that, that every time they do, so, oh, I did this and I did that. Well, okay, so you just did it so that people think you're great. Any sort of karmic reward, although reward is the wrong word, any value that you will not even gain, because that's the wrong word, any value that is inherent in giving selflessly will be destroyed if you have to advertise it. It's completely ruined at that point, because you went into it with the wrong... You, you know, you can't just fucking tell people what you're doing because it's basically you're doing it for selfish reasons aren't you because you're trying to look good and that's what he's doing here so i can't even sell it online and i've got people online that are reading it and making money off it without my permission <laughs> which isn't true of course he probably thinks that at that point i think there is um he thinks that people he doesn't understand anything with regard to the internet he doesn't understand anything like copyright licensing Nothing. He doesn't get a single element of how the internet works, obviously, in case you needed me to tell you that. And I've got people online that are reading it and making money off it without my permission. Um, so that's going to piss him off if he believes that, which I think, you know, maybe people are feeding him incorrect information um, and they're making money off my name without my permission. Okay, well... Hmm. I've got a minute, I can't 
can't even sell it online I've got people online that are reading it and making money off it without my permission and they're making money off my name without my permission I can't protect me I can't protect my my family oh you, it's just incessant you know this in this really pathetic victim mentality of, please feel sorry for me and not only is it not only is he trying to manipulate the court into think into making them think that he's the victim he's trying to make it about his family i can't protect my family okay um dude do you know what i mean it's like you know he stuttered a bit there as well which I would suggest means that he knows he's walking on shaky ground there. I, I can't protect my, my family, you know. Was he going to say dogs? I can't protect my dogs from getting online abuse, you know. Um, the only thing I really want to do on YouTube is to be able to sing and do my cooking shows. <laughs> that is when I lost my shit. That, that is without a doubt. You've You've got to try and understand the context in which that was said. Just imagine you're in this um, this quite a big courtroom that's beautifully laid out. You know, you've got it's pretty empty, but it's it, there's you know everybody's quiet and respectful. Lawn's talking, he's crying, and maybe to somebody else it might not have been funny. But just think, right? We've watch the law and reality show and we know how pathetically funny it is and to think that he would bring that up to think that he would mention his cooking shows to try and make it like it's some kind of viable you know vocation or well not vocation but some kind of viable option and something that it just, it's so fucking funny. Like, I just want to do my cooking shows. Dude, oh, jeez. It's just amazing. What a, what an amazing thing. Other than that, I don't care to be online. I don't. I don't care to even engage with anybody online. What is he going on about? <laughs> I, d I don't even care to engage with anybody online. He's there. <laughs> He's there. Because he, he spoke to an imaginary 13-year-old girl for a month online. Of course, he's talking in the present tense, but, you know, even it is funny. Like, I don't care to engage with anybody online. The whole fucking reason is in that courtroom is because he engaged with somebody online in the most ridiculous way. Oh, brilliant. I don't know how to pause. I don't know how to go about keeping them away from me and attacking me and my family. You know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. You don't need me to keep harping on about the same thing. Nobody's attacking him and his family. If they're doing it online, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? People, this is, just doesn't get it. For me, I think there is an element, you know, because he, if he goes online and searches his videos and see all the shit he's getting, and when he says my family, it just basically means that Nathaniel Trevor did a video about his mum and didn't his mother get something in the mail? I don't, I'm not too sure who it was sent, who sent it. Um, and that's what he'll keep bringing up. You know, it's all about the sympathy card. He doesn't mind bringing his family into it, as we've already said. I can't get probation to help me with that because they don't know how to do it. Okay. Well... There isn't, you know, what what specific problem is it? You know, we and he's blamed probation twice already. And of course, it's probation's reason that he's there. Of course, he's going to blame them. They're the enemy, as far as he's concerned. He hasn't breached his um, conditions. They've not, they've not helped him enough to stop him breaching his conditions. That'll be his mindset. They don't know how to do it. And that's, and that's part of what makes me makes me drink. So he's blaming probation for him drinking, and I don't want to drink anymore. So he doesn't want to do it. Um, because you know, he doesn't want to do it. But that's what 
makes him drink. It's he can't get probation to help him. They don't need, even know how to do it. So he's kind of he can't get them to help him, but yet they don't know how to do what he wants them to do. So the the kind of in a no win situation there, and he's already admitted that in his own words. And that's part of what makes him drink. So he knows that it's bullshit, which is why he says that's part rather than that's the absolute truth. It's kind of, you know, he's not a great liar in in sophisticated terms. He's not a sophisticated liar. Um, And I don't want to drink anymore and I don't want to put my mum through this. Um, So it's it's just it's exa- it's exactly what you would expect would expect from Lonely Armstrong is that um it's all probation's fault it's the people online it's um and from from his perspective it's kind of true in his reality um cuz you know there are people that won't I've, we've already said there are people that that won't leave him alone. I don't know that he's getting catfish now, but there will always be someone somewhere that oh, it wasn't this was it? Isn't there this robot shit going on or something? I've fucking no idea. He's but isn't there like a isn't he doesn't he? I've heard that some computerized voice is talking to him, which is quite funny. I must admit. <laughs> but the point is. There'll always be someone with fuck all better to do. Do you know what I mean? That seems to think that that's... You know, well, each to their own. If you get something out of it, fair enough. But I would suggest that uh, maybe time could be more productively put. That would be my argument. Even I have to question myself doing a 30-minute video a week. Um, and my stream... Although, you know, people like the streams, don't they? They're good. I enjoy doing the chat log with Shin and Amanda James and Tiffany. It's good fun. Um, and I'm trying to justify myself again. But I do, you know, with regard to the whole lawn thing, I, I, I do, because I'm very introspective, incredibly introspective. Of intro, and even before I made this video, I had to say, right, you know, it's Tuesday evening. Is this, you know, is this an adequate use of my time? And I don't, I don't spend all day analysing every decision to the nth degree, but, you know, I do have to think, you know, but I do like these. It's nice to do these videos every now and again. Um, it's good fun. I like seeing people's comments, um, you know, and, and you know, like I said, it, lawn, lawn is a bit of a, a personal investment of mine, which is weird, and on the whole, it's been a good endeavour. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I don't want to put my mum through this. That's all. That's all, folks. Um, all right, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honour. So, Mr. Armstrong, I'm going to speak to you very briefly. And as I do, I'm going to tell you what sentence I'm going to pose. And then I'll ask you to stand for the imposition of sentence. Right, I think, yeah, okay. I think I'll go over this on another video. About what Judge Woodcock said to Lorne. Um, because it's interesting. Um, and it might bring back some memories as well. Every so often when I think about the sort of court. It, it brings flashes of memory back. Um, just just listening to him cry in that situation was brilliant. Because I, I think I remember me and Shin, talk, Shin talking about it. And... And we were like, I wonder if he'll cry. And it just, it couldn't have gone any better. From a, it was like it made, I'd had a great trip anyway, because you've got to, and I'll keep going on about it, but I'll continue. You've got to understand that I've never been to the States before up until that point. And I'd had a beautiful ride up the East Coast all the way from, um, you know, all the way from uh, Boston to Maine. And seeing a part of the world I'd never seen before, and I was mesmerised by the beauty of the East Coast, just fucking mesmerised, and it was fall, and it looked great, and then, you know, I met some great people, and I'd not met Shim before, and, you know, we'd just to, and then, you know, we'd had a few drinks the night before, and we did the live stream, and then to go in court, it was just, it was just a brilliant experience, it really was, you know, I, 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 
it's just it was just one of them things I remember when the opportunity arose and I was like I know I've you know it just felt like the right thing to do like you know it'll be a, it'll be a nice trip you know um and I'm so glad that I did because it was only was that 2000 was that in 2019 so it would have been only a few months after that, the the, co- the coronavirus started and then the whole travelling, international travel went to shit. Do you know what I mean? And I'm planning to go back at the end of the year, but I don't know what's going to happen with regard to travelling. So, you know, it was it was just a great, it was just a great experience and, and to, you know, just, I remember thinking at the time, when I cracked up laughing and I couldn't stop for like fucking 20 minutes, it's all been worth it, you know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's the end of that. I hope that you've enjoyed me um, going over this little lawn's rant and, and whatnot and um, tell me about any thoughts that you've got. I'd be interested in hearing it. Um, might have a stream going at the weekend. We'll have to let you know. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.